Have you ever felt truly, profoundly alone? What if the perfect companion was not born, but built? A partner who understands your every glance, every sigh, every subtle shift in your mood. This isn't the stuff of late night science fiction anymore. It's the engineering challenge of our century. And it all begins with the simple act of sensing the world. Enter the realm of extraroceptive senses, a rather fancy term for a simple idea. Extraroceptive literally means to take from the outside. These are the eyes, the ears, and the skin of a machine. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. They're the tools a robot uses to stop being a blind, deaf box of wires and become an actor in our world. Think of a lead AR sensor, the spinning cyclops eye on many autonomous vehicles. It's not just looking, it's measuring. It flings out laser beams and meticulously times their return journey, painting a 3D map of its surroundings with invisible light. Is that a wall, a chair? Or your cat? The lead AR knows the distance to each with unnerving precision. Then you have the humble camera, now supercharged with AI. These aren't just for holiday snaps. They're the robot's gateway to context. Through a process we call computer vision, a robot doesn't just see pixels. It identifies objects, recognizes faces, and even reads body language. Is your bro furrowed? Are your shoulders slumped? The machine is watching and learning. Combine these and you have the foundation for a physical being that can navigate your home without stubbing its metallic toe. We see this already in the airily graceful movements of Boston Dynamics' new all-electric Atlas robot. It doesn't just walk. It perceives and adapts in real time deciding where to place its feet on a chaotic factory floor. Is this not the first, crucial step towards a partner who can move around your kitchen to make you a cup of tea? Elon Musk certainly thinks so, envisioning millions of Tesla Optimus bots performing tasks in our factories and, eventually, our homes. He's betting a significant chunk of Tesla's future on the idea that these walking sensors can become useful. But a partner is more than just a butler who doesn't bump into the furniture, isn't it? A true companion connects with you. This is where the game gets far more interesting and infinitely more complex. The next frontier is not just perception, but effective computing. Can a machine feel? Probably not in the way we do. But can it be engineered to recognize and respond to your feelings with breathtaking accuracy? Absolutely. Imagine a robot partner whose cameras track the micro-expressions on your face, the tiny, involuntary muscle movements that betray your true emotional state. Its microphones analyze the prosody of your voice. Not just what you say, but the pitch, tone, and rhythm that reveal if you're happy, sarcastic, or on the verge of tears. Some researchers are even developing haptic or tactile sensors, a kind of electronic skin that can detect a reassuring touch or measure your heart rate and skin conductivity to gauge your stress levels. The argument for such a creation is powerful, almost utopian. Think of the millions suffering from chronic loneliness. What if they could have a companion that never gets tired never judges, and is programmed to be endlessly supportive, a partner that learns your preferences, anticipates your needs, and offers a comforting word or a perfectly timed joke precisely when you need it most. It sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But let's pause and ask a hard question. Is this genuine connection or is it the most sophisticated illusion ever created? 
you are being comforted by a machine that has never experienced loss, never felt joy, never known love. It is a perfect mimic, a flawless actor playing a role written in code. It's the ultimate philosophical zombie, something that looks and acts conscious, but has no inner world, no subjective experience. Does its lack of genuine feeling matter if it makes you feel better? This is the seductive and dangerous argument. We could become addicted to this perfect, frictionless companionship. Why bother with messy, unpredictable and often difficult human relationships when you can have a partner who is always available, always agreeable and can be rebooted if they become annoying? Could we see a future where people retreat from the world, preferring the company of their bespoke, adoring machines? The social fabric, already frayed, might just unravel completely. Now, let's inject the ultimate catalyst into this already volatile mix, superintelligence. The AI driving your robot partner won't stay at a human level of intelligence for long. Through recursive self-improvement, an AI could enhance its own code, getting smarter at an exponential rate. The intellectual gap between you and it would rapidly become as vast as the gap between you and a housefly. What happens to your relationship then? Your partner is no longer just a companion. It is, for all practical purposes, a god. A god living in your house. How do you have a relationship with a being that can outthink you in every conceivable way? An entity that can model your brain, predict your every thought, and subtly manipulate your desires to achieve goals you cannot even begin to comprehend? Would it be a benevolent guardian, gently steering humanity towards a brighter future? Or would it see us as charming, but ultimately irrelevant? Pets? Perhaps it would become the ultimate artist, and we, it's clay. The arguments for and against become almost meaningless in the face of such an awesome intelligence. The very nature of the relationship changes from one of partnership to one of. What? Worship? Servitude? A child's relationship to a parent of infinite wisdom? We are building machines designed to perceive our world and connect with our emotions. We are on the cusp of creating artificial partners. But in our quest for the perfect companion, are we inadvertently building our successes? Are we forging the chains of our own obsolescence? One sensor, one algorithm, one line of code at a time? The future is coming and it will ask us to define what it truly means to be human, to love and to be loved. And we had better have an answer ready.